Hello and welcome back to another episode of the Bythonic Accountant. Today we are going to do something pretty cool uh, and show you how we can scrape a web page uh, that has some dynamic content loaded onto it, uh, specifically JavaScript uh, pages. So one thing that is typically a challenge when trying to do any kind of web scraping of pages is if you have a web page that uh, instead of the data just kind of already being available in the underlying HTML and being displayed on the page, um, that's typically how uh, web scraping would identify and extract information. In some cases, the data that's displayed on the page is shown up uh, after some JavaScript code runs it and grabs it from the back end and then displays it on your page. So when your code tries and reads the HTML, it just sees the instructions for how to get the data, but doesn't see the data itself. Um, so we'll show you an example of that uh, and how to get around it. So it's actually pretty cool. We're going to be doing all this in Google Colab, um, which is awesome because you don't have to have uh, Python installed on your computer to use it. So first I'm going to show how typically you would go and grab um, information from a table on a web page and this can be done for financial or accounting data as well as other data as we're showing here. Um, so the first thing I'll do is import pandas as pd and then here we're using um, a Wikipedia table of colors so it's a list of colors and it's this page here um, A through F so a bunch of really pretty cool colors and um, identifying uh, the URL as this uh, variable colors and then we're going to say colors data frame is equal to pd.readhtml colors. So let's go ahead and run that. And then um, this probably, let's see how many tables we, sh we return. It's probably just one table. And oh, there's seven tables. Interesting. All right, well, we're just going to interest it in the first one. So let's go ahead and view this table. And sure enough, we got what we need. You know, you've got all these colors, you've got the RGB. Um, and then the percentage, blah, blah, blah. So all your data you need, we've gotten. Now, you run into trouble when you want to try to get something from, say, this web page that has, you know, it looks like it's got tables on it. You can click and highlight. Um, but when you go and look at the underlying HTML, so let's see if you can view source. You'll see it's actually pretty short compared to um, it's a lot of HTML, but if I try and find some of the data from this table, uh, for example, let's see if I can even find the word ton. I'm not even sure if it's on here. And the word ton doesn't even show up because it is getting generated by some JavaScript. So I um, don't want to spend too much time trying to find it, but there's somewhere in here that says, hey, th there's going to be a table here that I don't have any data for it yet, but I want you to create the table uh, using my JavaScript information. So what we're going to do is we're going to use something called Selenium, which is a web page automation software. And uh, it's open source, and it's easy to use in Python. And uh, we're going to use what's called a headless version of Selenium. So typically, the use of Selenium is to pop open a web page on your computer and control its actions. But what's really cool is you can have Selenium run in the background without any screen showing up, but it will still um, run it, and it'll still like generate the content of the page as if you were running it. So instead of looking at the un, um, you know, the original HTML, it'll generate what the actual updated HTML looks like, even though it won't show the page. So the way to do that here is first um, we have to install Selenium. So what the way to do that is to install Selenium. We're also going to install something called Beautiful Soup. Um, next is, since this is running on a Linux machine, you have to do uh, this code here, apt-get update. And the exclamation mark basically just allows you to access the uh, command prompt but, but, you know, behind the hood. And then apt-get update just makes sure it updates the package list. So when we go and install Chromium Chrome driver, it updates uh, and installs a correct version. So we're going to install that now, and I already have it installed, so we're good. Now we're going to import what we need. So Selenium, we're going to grab WebDriver. We're going to import Beautiful Soup. We already have Pandas. Um, these are really important. These are setting up options to tell it that we want it to be headless, and a couple of other options that are critical for it to actually work properly. 
and generate the uh, dynamic content. So here we're going to give it the site that we're looking at, which is this one here. And then um, now we're going to set up the web driver. So WD is the web driver, and we're using Chrome driver, and we're using the options that we gave it up here. And then we're going to go ahead and get the website that we need. And now we'll have this WD available to us. And what it does is it's already generated the, the updated code, the updated HTML. So now I'm going to say, okay, let me grab that HTML. So this is the, the HTML from the page source. Then we're going to load that into a data frame. So now we've got data frame is read HTML from HTML. So doing the same thing we tried doing before, but now we're doing it after Selenium has tried to generate what the content should be on the page. And I already know we're in good shape because before when we tried to do that, it errored out and said, you know, hey, warning, uh, there's no tables here. And actually, I didn't even run it, so this is what it would do. There's the page we're trying to get. Here's what we would see if we tried to run it without doing any of our magic. It's going to say, uh-oh, no tables found. That's not good. But when we do it in our updated version, where we have read in the updated HTML, voila, now we have a beautiful table. So let's see if that matches up with our table that we saw. So we should see uh, wheat. November 20th at 177, and there you have it, wheat. November 20th, 177. If we want the next table, the uh, Matif, December 20th, 188. Let's see if we get that. Uh, table one is the second table. And Matif, December 20th, 188. There you have it. So if you wanted from here, you could export this to you know an Excel or CSV, uh, to CSV. Uh, matif.csv and let's see if we can read that that should show up in my files and here it is and let's see sure enough now we have this CSV file that we can uh, do what we want with it so there you have it um, I think that is really cool <laughs> and uh, I think it has a lot of potentially awesome uses and to me it was really cool seeing that this can be done in the Google Colab environment. Um, you could do the same thing on your desktop, you just have to make sure you install the libraries properly and, and, and download the driver. Um, it'll look a little bit different on a Windows machine, um, but if anybody has any questions about that, shoot me a note in the comments um, or send me an email, pythoniccpa at gmail.com and I can try and help you out there. But um, thanks to one of the, uh, one of our uh, followers who suggested this and ha asked this question. So um, thanks for suggesting it and hopefully this answered the question for you. If you liked it, please uh, like the video and if you are uh, interested in seeing more like it, click subscribe and hope you have a wonderful day. See ya!